Hello everyone, and thank you for watching my channel, Hello Life. And also thank you to those of you who um, liked or subscribed um, and gave feedback. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this week, the I Ching, this week, the first to the 7th of November, the I Ching is hexagram 21, which is called Biting Through. So let's read from the book of the I Ching, from the book of changes. Hexagram 21. The key questions that we need to ask ourselves this week are, what, what must you do to get to the truth? And how can you become more effective? It's a time to bite through to the truth, cracking the situation open like a bone between your teeth, using the power of a diviner to open up the smooth surfaces of things and penetrate to the essence. Resting content with appearances may be easier, but it is no longer enough. Well, Fuzzy agrees. <laughs> so we have to try and work out. There's so many truths out there. There's so much information. And how do you know? People often ask, how do I know what's true? So we need to work out within ourselves, what is truth? The best way that I find of doing this is using the breath. So putting your left hand onto your heart center, your right hand onto your belly, connecting, breathing, aligning with yourself, feeling the information. So bringing what's in your mind down into the heart center. So dropping into the heart and feeling with the gut. And then we will know because it's important to stay aligned. It's important to hold your center with what you believe to be true. So if you're thinking, I don't feel aligned, I feel completely off alignment. I, I just feel um, out there. I don't feel grounded. You have to ask yourself who moved because at all times, the universe, source, God, whatever you want to term the higher spiritual power is always there. So it's us that move off our alignment and we need to work out what does that, what bumps you off alignment, what takes you away from your truth. And also um, to remind ourselves that if something smells, it's off. We spend a tremendous amount of time trying to overanalyze and think our way out of our alignments because we can't believe that something could be true. So we, when something smells, it's off. Don't spend time trying to stir and see exactly what's going on. Go with a feeling. In the healing runes, quite interestingly enough, uh, we got the rune for courage. So in the healing runes we read, courage is faith in action. Drawing this rune indicates that you are being asked to recognize and honor the courage and strength of your own spirit. As you do, you will grow in the understanding necessary to continue traveling the road you have chosen and to face with wisdom whatever challenges life brings. The courage is faith in action. Interesting, hey? So the society that we live in now is, is completely fear addicted. Everybody is wound up, living in fear, attracted to the drama, getting stuck in the pain. So in the world that we live in now, we have a choice. How do I want to respond? Love or fear? And those two emotions cannot coexist in the same body. So we need to make that decision and love takes courage and courage is the willingness to confront difficult situations, especially the courage to be authentic, to express exactly who you are, to freely say what you think, feel and believe and stop pleasing others. So get away from the herd. The herd entangles our um, emotions and we get swept up in the drama. That same thing as biting 
through, like what feels true for you. We can feel something that's true for us. And as soon as we get swept up in the crowd, we start doubting ourselves. And that's what we've got to move away from. So find your inner peace and your space and your um, courage to be who you are. If we um, do live in fear, our paradigm is the world out there controls me. In other words, I'm a victim to the outside influences. That's fear. If we live in courage or choose courage or with an open heart, I co-create the world that I want to live in. In other words, I'm in charge here as far as I can be. So we need to look at those two things. Find the truth, stick with your truth, and have the courage to be yourself. Astrologically, next week, the 1st to the 7th of November, we've got a lovely new moon on the 4th in Scorpio, Scorpio ruled by Pluto. So death and rebirth, an opportunity to have new beginnings, to start something from a fresh, in other words, change a habit, something that you've grown tired of. There may be obstacles next week and also disappointments. And the disappointments will relate to people who you trusted. So just look out for that and do not feel that you have an overactive imagination. If your gut feeling says something, you are right, especially next week. So step into your power with courage, express yourself, and if you need to confront a certain situation, if you're feeling on edge about something and you feel that someone is doing something behind your back, look into it, don't let it go. So it's important, otherwise um, your thoughts are consumed about the issue, bring it to the light and transform it. Um, that's the best way to deal with things. And that, that is a very Scorpio way as well, is digging, getting to the bottom of things, bringing it out into the light and releasing it. So let's see what's happening in the cards this week. I thought Fuzzy might come and sit here with us, but he's sitting on the couch, <laughs> waiting for some attention. Okay, so the week of first to the 7th of November. Gosh, November already. Okay, so we go. Funny, <clears throat> how fascinating. So the um, central theme here is the Ten of Cups, which is the, the union, the happy family, the celebrations of togetherness, <laughs> crossed by the tower, unexpected issues. The tower is the Scorpio, the, uh, the um, phoenix rising out of the ashes, the death and the rebirth. So unexpected um, changes and obstacles to something which may look harmonious. Well, expect the unexpected. We live in a world um, that is basically our mantra at the moment, where change is our only constant. Okay, let's see what interesting outcomes here. Mm, interesting week. All right, so in the past year, you may have been thinking or contemplating on certain issues going within, the hermit, shedding light on stuff. And the fool, wanting to be more free, wanting to find some form of freedom, wanting to take some time off, small little trips somewhere, and being more playful, and open, looking for a new opening, tired of the rut, wanting change, wanting something new and invigorating, something that uh, lights you up. But going ahead here, the Eight of Cups, it's walking away from something with no regrets. So if you are deciding to change jobs, uh, end a relationship, or move into something new, tie up all the loose ends nice and neatly. 
the um, new moon is a good time to start um, something fresh, um, even if you don't leave right now. It's making the plans to do that. And then within the next two months, so 1st of January, which is a very um, popular time to start new things. So the Eight of Cups walking away with no regrets. And the sun is wishes and hopes fulfilled, almost like the star. <coughs> Excuse me. So <clears throat> the sun is looking for what you want. So opening up completely, saying the universe radiates into me. I am accepting the, that wisdom and moving forward with that wisdom. That's almost a kind of empowered surrender. And the outcome, interestingly, is the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords <clears throat> is feeling lying awake at night worrying. So this situation as it looks now, Five of Swords is your current environment. So Five of Swords is betrayal. It seems like there's a lot of that around at the moment in this week, where disappointment, an unfair victory, where somebody did something behind your back, where somebody did something unexpected, or it's just um, where you felt they had a bit of the rug pulled out from under you. Um, and then the current environment that there are openings. So don't let this hold you back. Remember, choose your response. Move forward with courage. Don't get put off by other people's behavior. You control. I co-create the world in which I live. In your wishes, hopes, and dreams, you've got the page of swords, which is new ideas are coming through. So you might just be at this turning point where you feel, I can't anymore. I'm just going to give up. Don't. It's always when we're just about to have a breakthrough that we, that we stop. It's very, very often like that, where what we are looking for is just around the corner. So do not give up. If you lie awake at night with the nine of swords, worrying about things, living in your mind, keep breathing. Use the breath, breathe into your heart, breathe into your belly and trust, release, surrender here to the sun. So opening up, allowing the information to come through for you. Surrender to what you need to know. Stop trying to control everything. So we need to almost let go of what we've decided is going to happen and say, okay, let's see what else might just magically appear for me if I do that. And in the angel cards, have a look here. Which one should we pick? Let's do this. Balance. All right. So the, the angel card of balance came up. That's what we need to do this week. I think that's actually quite good advice from the angel cards is balance out our lives um, with this rocky um, instability, which really does appear to have come um, astrologically and through the cards, that there can be unexpected things and obstacles and ups and downs. So try and keep, hold the balance, just keep the balance and hold your center. And thank you so much. I really do wish you a wonderful week with lots of harmony and peace and alignment. And I'll see you next week. Namaste. Thank you so much for watching.